Hello everyone, uh, my name is Caitlin Lundberg Dorr and I'm going to be focusing on the abortion policy and specifically the abortion policy in Alberta. Um, abortion is something that is done at a provincial level, so I just decided to choose Alberta because um, how conservative it is, it's pretty interesting to see uh, all the pro-life opinions coming in. So to start off, why are abortion policies important? Well, abortions will happen no matter what. So whether or not you're restricting abortion, women will still have abortions just in a more dangerous way. If you restrict abortion, women are going to start having them themselves, which can lead to a lot more death, a lot more injury. So it's something that is really good to have so that we can have doctors performing them. It also protects a woman's right to health. Um, if a woman can't go through a pregnancy because it poses significant health issues, it's her right to choose. It should be her right to choose whether or not she wants to continue with it. Um, a woman's right to reproductive self-determination. Women have many different reasons why they don't want to go through a pregnancy and it's up to them to decide whether or not, and it's no one's business, why they don't want to go through a pregnancy. So why, what do abortion policies seek to solve? And they seek to solve women endangering their lives by having them, letting them go to doctors and get it done professionally under medical advisory. It leads to less deaths and it's very safe for women to have abortions in Canada. It protects a woman's rights, it protects her right to security and liberty in Canada. Um, and it's something that needs to be protected. It's in our charter of rights and freedoms. Um, and then equality as well. It's not fair to have someone else choose what a woman's got to do with her life. So I want to look at the United States Roe v. Wade. This was their landmark case and it's something that holds quite significance to Canada. Um, in 1973, the United States affirmed the, that the right to abortion relies on the woman and not the government. This protected the woman's 14th Amendment, which is their privacy. Unfortunately, in June of 2022, the United States Supreme Court overturned this decision and this led to almost half of the states immediately banning or severely restricting, restricting abortion based on trigger, law, trigger laws that had already been in place. So why does this matter in Canada? Um, Canada and the US do have very different legal systems. In the US, each state can put in their own uh, criminal laws. Rather than in Canada, criminal laws only made at the federal level, provinces cannot enact any criminal law. They just enforce what Canada already has. Um, and many Canadians have been worried that the effects of Roe v. Wade could happen to us. Uh, many politicians have affirmed though that this would not happen to us or at least any time in the near future. After the overturning of Roe v. Wade, no abortion laws or rights were changed. Um, so it hasn't affected us too much, but it is something to just pay attention to just because the states is so close to us as well. So who has jurisdiction over abortion laws in Canada? So in Canada, it is under criminal law that there cannot be any anti-abortion laws. Criminal law is made at the federal level and healthcare falls under the provincial. Abortion is considered a healthcare service. Therefore, it makes it up to the provinces to make specific reg regulations. This is why we see different regulations at different provinces, especially in the Maritimes, we see a lot more restriction of abortions than we see in Alberta, BC, and Ontario. So what does the timeline look like in Alberta? In 1969, limited abortions first became available. However, in order to access an abortion, you did have to go before a private committee and they would look at your eligibility requirements and they would decide whether or not you could have an abortion. Dr. Morgan Teller did not like this and he started opening up his own clinics and was providing abortions for women who did not meet the requirements originally. In 1988, or eventually he was charged uh, as a criminal offense, but in 1988 it did go before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled that it was un unconstitutional to restrict abortions. Uh, in 1990 to 1991, Bill C-43 was making its way through Parliament and it was a bill that seeked to criminalize abortions. Thankfully, it did fail, but it did get all the way to the Senate until they, it resulted in a rare tie. So it did not go any further past that. 
1991, Morgan Teller opened up two abortion clinics in Alberta. The first one was in Edmonton and Calgary followed not too long afterwards. In 1995, the Committee to End Tax-Funded Abortion was created. This committee seeks to end government funding to abortions and they did a study that showed 71% of Albertans did actually agree with this committee. From the time of 2006 to 2015, there have been multiple attempts to pass anti-abortion legislation. Thankfully, all of them did fail because they were found to be unconstitutional. And in 2018, Premier Rachel Notley had enacted the Protecting Choice for Women Accessing Healthcare Act. This protects women seeking care at any reproductive and sexual health clinics from the aggressive protesters that are there. So R.V. Morgan Teller of 1988 Prior to this case, as I said before, women did have to seek uh, approval from an outside committee for an abortion. Morgan Teller was one of three doctors that opened up a clinic and they were giving women abortions who had not been approved by this committee. He was caught and uh, charged. However, he did argue that restricting abortion did violate a woman's right to security in this charter. And the Supreme Court eventually did agree that this was unconstitutional. Since then, no anti-abortion laws have been able to pass since, and this is the case that courts use as precedent when looking at any abortion-related cases. So the current abortion policies in Alberta. There are no right to abortion laws in Alberta, and there is very good reason for that. The only one that is really in Alberta that supports abortion is the Protecting Choice for Women Accessing Healthcare Act. So as I mentioned earlier, this act is there to create a bubble or access zone where protesters are prohibited from being. And this is to protect women from all the traumatic and dangerous situations that they were getting put in, just trying to seek help. Sometimes they're not even going there for an abortion. They're just going there for education and advice and guidance. Um, so now abortion is available unrestricted up to 20 weeks in Alberta and it is covered under health care insurance so women have to pay little if anything if they're seeking an abortion and there's been many failed attempts specifically by Alberta MPs to restrict abortion and all have failed so what's being successful at this policy uh, women are able to access sexual and re reproductive health clinics it's something that we are very lucky to have and not every country is able to have so having these policy having this policy in place is allowing this um, women are able to access plan b and medical abortions women get to choose they get to choose if they want to have a pregnancy no matter what the reason is it's up to them which is very important and finally again it is covered under health care insurance so how is this policy created so R.V. Morgan Teller was the reason why everything's unconstitutional to have any anti-abortion laws. But the Women in Healthcare, Accessing Healthcare Act, that act was created because of how dangerous and traumatic these experiences were for women. Protesters can be very aggressive and show very traumatic photos of, why, of what happens to a baby in an abortion, and most of them are not true. So this act was created just to help women in these situations and make it a little more comfortable for them to go there because it is a hard thing for women to do no matter what they choose. So there are a few pro-life groups in Alberta. Uh, pro-life is defined as anyone who is not who is against abortions. Normally it's around like as soon as the baby has a heartbeat they're very much against it. Most of them are just against it no matter what. Um, but they're very loud and it's very hard to ignore them and they do that purposefully. Sometimes they even are louder than the pro-choice groups. So one of the groups is the Calgary Pro-Life. They provide education and spread awareness for life inside the womb. They have banners that they allow for rentals and they participate in an annual hike for life. This is used to spread awareness and raise funds for their group. The Wilberforce Project, they offer a political education to pro-lifers and then they help get them elected. So their goal is to have as many pro-lifers in parliament and all that as possible just to help pass more laws. Um, they push to allow a parent notification of a minor seeking abortion at a conservative foundation party. And they hold an annual pro-life gala, which they use to raise money 
um, last year they raised over $50,000 in donations for their group. And finally, Pro-Life Alberta. They are a political group who seeks to be the voice for the voiceless. They are the only pro-political charity in Alberta that actually actively participates in politics within the province. Now, there are some pro-choice groups in Alberta. Pro-choice is defined as people who are there for the women to choose. They want the women to be able to choose, and it is something that is very different from pro-abortion. Pro-abortion and pro-choice should not be mixed up because they are very different. Just because you're pro-choice doesn't mean you want women to get abortions. It just means that you're there and you support the women to choose whatever they feel is best for them. So the Alberta Pro-Choice Coalition is a Facebook group that I found. Uh, they support women's sexual and reproductive rights. They counter anti-choice campaigns with reputable and well-informed women's organizations. And they share news and articles commonly about abortion rights, not just in Canada, but in the States and around the world as well. And they also share clinic updates, any hours, any changes in it, any new openings. They've all got it posted on their page and they are fairly active as well. Um, the Pro-Choice so, Pro Society of Lethbridge in Southern Alberta. Uh, this group supports and protects women's reproductive and sexual health again. Uh, they support a timely and legal abortion. And they were actually very successful in lobbying to have anti-abortion ads removed from buses in Lethbridge. So that has got one really good success story there, which is kind of how they all started. Um, what are the critiques of the policy? So one main thing is a lack of access. Alberta only has five clinics available to people and most of them are only in urban areas, which means people who live outside of these urban areas, rural, indigenous communities especially, they have to travel quite far. Um, there was actually a study done that women usually travel on average about 100 kilometers to seek an abortion and it's even further for indigenous women, which creates a huge problem. If women have children already, then they have to get childcare. If they have a job, they have to take time off of their job because these clinics are usually only open regular business hours. So there is a huge lack of access. Um, also, many politicians criticize that there are no and or pro-abortion laws in place. There's very good reason for this. Justin Trudeau has even commented on this, saying that he will not pass any pro-abortion laws. And this is because there is a very big divide in our Canadian government and our provincial governments on pro-choice and pro-life. This leads to a lot of mix up or a good mix of people. And if we make pro-abortion laws, this opens up abortion to being politicized. No other medical procedure is politicized like this. If you want to get a knee replacement or you need shoulder surgery or something like that, it's not politicized and abortion is considered a medical procedure. So to do that is just very out of the ordinary. Also, if you create these laws, it opens it up to a huge amount of possibility for restrictions. Pro-life people can go in and restrict it the hell out of it, which we could end up being in a worse situation than what we are now. So it's just something that governments are usually trying to avoid. So out of all this, why do we need some policy change? Well, first of all, your sexual and reproductive health clinics in Alberta are very minimal. There needs to be greater access, although uh, there has been talk with it. Rachel Notley talked about it when she was in power in 2018. Justin Trudeau has talked about it multiple times. However, there's still only five in Alberta, which is very low. So we need to open up more and it can't just be in the urban areas. We need to move stuff out to Southern Alberta and into the indigenous communities because for women to travel that far, it's no, it's no different from what's happening in the States because they can't access it in a timely manner. So it's something that we need to change. Um, there, there's also those clinics that are in place. They are limited. Their resources are extremely limited. There's not enough doctors, there's not enough materials or, and medical equipment. So women are not being able to be treated in a timely manner or even properly because there's so many patients that they have to get through. So this needs to change and there needs to be more resources given to these clinics just to better protect our women. So that was it. I did um, just wanted to mention how many uh, resources I found. There are plenty of resources out there and it was something that you kind of had to pick, 
through everything to find. So um, thank you so much for listening and I really hope everyone learned a little bit today. Thank you.